Hi, I'm Dr. Rajan Sagar and from the University of California, Los Angeles. And the topic we're discussing today is how are connective tissue diseases and pulmonary arterial hypertension related? So first we have to address connective tissue disease or a synonym or a commonly used alternative phrase, collagen vascular disease. These are really diseases that represent a spectrum of diseases which are often systemic, they're autoimmune in etiology, and they're often characterized by the presence of autoantibodies, significant organ damage, which again is immune mediated. And what's really interesting about these diseases is that there's significant overlap and clinical heterogeneity. Some of the ones that are defined by the American College of Rheumatology include diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Sjogren's syndrome, systemic lupus, erythematosus, the myositis, a spectrum of diseases such as polymyositis and dermatomyositis, systemic sclerosis, including scleroderma, as well as mixed connective tissue diseases and the so-called undifferentiated connective tissue disease. So that's a, a comprehensive list of the existing entities that we term connective tissue diseases or collagen vascular diseases. So to address the question we're trying to ask today, then we have to ask, what is pulmonary hypertension? Pulmonary hypertension, in simple terms, is an elevated pulmonary pressure within the pulmonary circulation at rest. And this is really a very common cardiovascular abnormality, but has multiple etiologies. So its presence needs to be explained with clinical correlation. Now, pulmonary arterial hypertension, on the other hand, is a very small subgroup of the larger, more common pulmonary hypertension and really results specifically from restricted blood flow through a compromised, usually the small pulmonary arterioles, and, and which compromises blood flow and really leads to a series of hemodynamic uh, events and consequences, which include increasing pulmonary artery pressure, increasing pulmonary vascular resistance, and eventually a deterrent to blood flow, so a decreasing cardiac output, and eventually, if unchecked and untreated, frank right-sided congestive heart failure, which eventually is the cause of death in this entity. The predominant pathology underlying these diseases, again, really has to be highlighted and is at the level of these small pulmonary arteries, or the so-called pulmonary arterioles, these are really where the resistance vessels lay. And if you look at these blood vessels in vitro in a, under, a, under the microscope, uh, you can clearly see that these, the, all three layers of the pulmonary arterioles are involved, the intima, the media, as well as the adventitia. There's significant remodeling and fibrosis. And uh, frankly, as has been shown in the last few years, significant amount of inflammation and features that may suggest a malignancy type phenotype in some cases. So pulmonary hypertension is really categorized as, again, the larger, more common cardiovascular abnormality into five groups. And the entity we're discussing today is pulmonary arterial hypertension, which as I mentioned is a small subgroup. And PAH, as it's called, it represents group one of the five groups that comprise pulmonary hypertension. And this group one PAH entity, again, as mentioned, has multiple etiologies of which autoimmune disease, connective tissue diseases, or collagen-vascular diseases, all signifying the same set of diseases, is a known etiology. There are other etiologies. Half of this cohort is idiopathic in nature, meaning we're not able to find an exact etiology. And the other half either includes an autoimmune basis or other entities such as portal hypertension, congenital heart disease, HIV, and others. Um, in group two pulmonary hypertension, this is pulmonary hypertension related to left heart disease, very common and the most common form of pulmonary hypertension. Group three uh, is a close second uh, in terms of frequency, and group three is pulmonary hypertension related to some form of lung disease or hypoxemia. So these are patients who often have parenchymal lung disease such as COPD or pulmonary fibrosis. Group four is pulmonary hypertension related to chronic thrombosis. And this is an important entity because there's usually a surgical option here, which is superior to the medical option. 
if the patient is amenable to surgical intervention. And then group five really represents pulmonary hypertension with either an unclear mechanism or multifactorial mechanisms. So again, we're focusing in here today on pulmonary hypertension related to connective tissue disease or autoimmune disease. And what's interesting about connective tissue disease is, is the heterogeneity in which it affects the pulmonary circulation and the lungs themselves. So for instance, you can get just about any WHO group manifestation, if you will, from an autoimmune disease. So for instance, in systemic sclerosis, which is the most common autoimmune disease leading to pulmonary arterial hypertension, systemic sclerosis can also manifest with a cardiomyopathy and lead to a more group two pulmonary hypertension phenotype. It can also manifest with interstitial lung disease and pulmonary fibrosis complicated by pulmonary hypertension, which is more of a WHO group three phenotype. And as many of us know, these patients can be hypercoagulable and develop blood clots and chronic thrombosis, which gives the patient more of a group four phenotype. So the important thing with connective tissue disease is that while it certainly is a cause of PAH, which is group one disease, its heterogeneity allows it to manifest in just about any WHO group fashion in the cardiopulmonary circuit. So with that, I think we can end, and uh, thank you for being part of this discussion. Thank you.